For our math warm up today, we have four decimals that I would like for you to write in word form. So if you would, pause your video, write each of those decimals in word form. Okay, so let's take a look. How did you do? So number one, you should have written four and nine tenths in word form. So double check your spelling, make sure that you've got the THS at the end of tenths. Number two, 80 hyphen four and three tenths. Once again, check for that THS. Number three, 137 and six tenths. Again, checking for that THS at the end. And number four, 927 and 51 hundredths. So notice this one was a hundredths with a THS at the end. Very important. How'd you do? Okay, so let's get ready for our math message today. I need you to open up your workbook to page 163. And your math message is going to be problem number one and number two. So pause your video and see if you can't figure out what you're supposed to do right here. Okay, so the first thing that we might want to do is take a look at the fact that both of these mixed numbers in this first problem happen to have the same denominator. So that's a good thing. That means we don't have to convert normally to something else. However, we are subtracting in this case. So if I'm going to make an estimate up here, which is what we need to do first, I'm going to be looking at my whole numbers, four minus one. So I know my answer is going to be possibly three wholes, but we are also subtracting a fraction from that. So we might say that our answer is going to be uh, three, we might say that it's going to be three and a half, okay? We might even write three or less, all right, for that one. If we take a look at the second problem and look at how are we going to estimate, our whole numbers are three and one. Again, we have the same denominator but notice I've got a one minus a two. So something's gonna be happening there. So for this one, I probably would write that my answer is going to be less than two. Okay, so there's different ways that we can write an estimate. So this kind of gives you an idea what you need to be thinking about. So now we're gonna to go to the problem and we're gonna look at how in the world do we subtract? The first one, I'm gonna look at the fraction part first of all. I have four fifths minus, so four fifths minus one fifth. So in this instance, if we pretend to ignore the denominator, we have four minus one. So in this particular problem, four minus one is going to give me three, and I'm gonna write my denominator, three fifths for that part of the problem. Then we're gonna move over to the whole number part. So we've got four minus one. So in this instance, for this problem, my final answer would be three and three-fifths. Now this one was a fairly easy one because we did not have to, quote, regroup. 
or change our mixed number, which is what we're gonna talk about in the next problem. So if you take a look at number two, things are gonna change because my fraction, I have one third minus two thirds. So what we're thinking is we need to subtract our numerators, one minus two. I can't do that. So if we were using whole numbers and we didn't have fractions and you were subtracting, you would regroup or what some people still call borrow. And that's kind of what we're going to do today. So you're gonna take that mixed number, three and one third, and we're going to cross it out and we're going to make a mixed number with a bigger fraction. So let me show you what I'm doing here. So if my original mixed number looks like this, we're gonna take 3 thirds from this. So that means I'm gonna take 3 minus 3 thirds, which is basically 3 minus 1, and this is going to become a two instead of a three. This three thirds that we're taking from that, we're trading, we're gonna add to that one third. So now instead of one third, it's going to be four thirds. So now instead of having three and one third, I'm going to have two and four thirds. And then I'm gonna bring over that one and two thirds that we had originally. And now I can do my subtraction. So we're gonna look at our fraction part here and we're gonna do four minus two, which happens to be two thirds. And then we're gonna move over to the whole number, two minus one, which gives me one. So my final answer for this problem will be one and two thirds. So like I said, it gets a little tricky when we have a numerator that is at the top that is smaller than what we are subtracting from. So just like when we are subtracting whole numbers, we have to regroup. In a sense, we are regrouping or renaming our mixed number to have a fraction larger, a larger fraction. So our lesson today, if you haven't quite figured it out, is subtraction of fractions and mixed numbers. So why, you ask, are we subtracting fractions and mixed numbers? Well, if we learn how to add them, we have to learn how to subtract fractions. So once you learn one thing, you have to learn the next, right? Okay, so let's talk about how we're gonna do this. First of all, we're gonna use some of the same strategies that we used with addition. We are also going to incorporate some previous strategies used with subtraction like trading and rewriting mixed numbers with larger fractions. So we've done the renaming part in some other lessons. For example, um, you might have had the fraction seven halves and you renamed it as a mixed number. So you kind of made a trade, right? How many, so if we looked at that seven halves, how many times could we subtract two halves from that? Because this is gonna be a whole, right? So this would be five halves. And then I could take another two halves from that, which equals three halves. So there's another whole. And then we could even take another two halves, if I squeeze that in there, away from that, and we have a half left. So in reality, seven halves is equal to three holes and one half. So we kind of did some of this before. 
we're gonna use some of these methods to help us subtract our mixed numbers in fractions today. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started with our examples. The first set of examples, we're gonna look at trading as our method for doing these particular problems. But before we get started, we wanna have a look here and a reminder of the questions that we asked ourselves and thought about when we were adding fractions and mixed numbers. So number one was, what is a good estimate for this problem? So this is still a good strategy to use when we are subtracting because we wanna make sure that we're on track. Number two, can I solve the problem mentally? This also can still be used with subtraction. We might end up having some problems that we can actually solve mentally in our head. Number three, do I need to find a common denominator? Again, if you are subtracting, just like when we are adding, we have to have the same denominator when we add or subtract. Now here's where it gets a little different. Number four, if you will recall, is the question that says, does my answer include a fraction greater than one? Should I rename it so it has a smaller fraction? Well, that worked when we were adding. That may not be the case when you are subtracting. So down here in red, I have an asterisk. Should I rename the start number as a mixed number with a larger fraction? Because in the fraction world, we might need to, quote, regroup, which is kind of like trading, right? Similar to what we would do with whole numbers, but it's with fractions, so it's a little bit trickier. So we need to keep this question in mind. Think about this question. Do I need to do this? And then we're going to jump back to number five. Does my answer make sense based on my estimate? So let's go ahead and get started with our first problem. We have three and one third, and I'm going to stack the problems so that we can look at them in a way that would make more sense. Okay, and anytime you have a problem like this, you're going to probably want to write it out on a piece of paper and stack the numbers just like if you were subtracting whole numbers because otherwise it's harder to regroup and figure out what I can and cannot do. So we're gonna start in the fraction column. And remember, when we subtract, just like when we add, we only are subtracting numerators. The denominator is already the same, so that is not going to change. But notice this will be one minus two. I can't subtract one minus two. So that brings me back up here to this word trading. So that means I'm going to have to take a whole and I'm gonna to have to trade it for a fraction. So when we think about the mixed number three and one third, and I'm gonna get rid of this here in a minute, but I just wanna show you if we broke it apart, we would take the whole and we would say, okay, that's equal to two plus one and then plus one third. This would be one way to decompose, so to speak, that mixed number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one and we're gonna trade it. So we're gonna pull that out of there and it's gonna become three thirds. That three thirds is then going to come back and get added to the one third that's already there. So now instead of three and one third, I'm going to have two and four thirds. So look at that for a minute, make sure that makes sense to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase that so we have more space. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer over that one and two thirds because it does not change. And now we're gonna subtract. So we're gonna do four minus two, which is two. 
thirds, and then we're gonna subtract our whole numbers, two minus one, which is one. And there you have it. Our answer to that first example is one and two thirds. So now let's take a look at our second example. We have four and one fifth minus two and three fifths. So again, I'm gonna take those mixed numbers and I'm going to stack them. And once again, when we look at our fraction part, which is where we wanna start, we have one minus three. We cannot do one minus three. Our denominator's the same, so we're good there but we're gonna to have to do some trading. So we're gonna trade a whole, and I'm gonna set this up just a little bit different, and you can decide which way is easier for you. But what I like to do is I cross out the whole number just like if I were regrouping um, whole numbers without fractions. And I'm gonna change that to a three and then I'm gonna add five fifths to that one fifth. So this becomes six fifths. So I'm gonna bring that over here so it's a little neater. So now I have three and six fifths. And again, I'm gonna bring over that two and three fifths. It doesn't change. And we're gonna subtract. So we're gonna, again, start in the fraction part of the problem. So now I have six minus three, I can do that. Six minus three is going to be three fifths. And then we're going to subtract the whole three minus two, which is one. So my answer for this problem will be one and three fifths. So let's take a look at some other examples. Um, rewriting with larger fractions, which is similar to what we were just doing because we were trading and we were making the fractions larger. So our first problem, we have four and one fourth minus one and one third. But what do you notice is different with this problem. Hopefully you noticed that the denominators are not the same. So we're gonna have some extra steps, aren't we? We go back to our questions that we need to look at. Do I need to find a common denominator? Why, yes, I do. So my denominators are three and four. The first thing that I want to think about is, is one of those a multiple of the other? No. Uh, second thing I want to think about is, is there a quick common denominator that I know? Like maybe thinking multiple wise. I know that 12 just happens to be a multiple of both of those. So I'm going to make my denominator 12 and we're gonna see what happens from there. So this is going to become, the four is not gonna change, but my denominator, my bottom number is gonna become a 12. How did I get that? I took four times three, so that means I'm gonna take my numerator times three. So now that becomes four and three twelfths. We're gonna do the same thing with the mixed number on the bottom. We're gonna make our denominator 12. How did I get 12? I'm gonna multiply times four. Ooh, this one gets even more tricky because notice, so now I have the same denominator, so I'm good there, but look, we're subtracting three minus four. So we're gonna have to do some trading. Once again, so I'm gonna do my little shortcut. You can decide if you wanna do it and break it apart like I showed you before, but I'm gonna cross out my four. I'm gonna make it the whole number three. 
and I'm going to add 12 twelfths, right? I'm taking that whole and turning it into a fraction to that 3 twelfths. So this is going to become 15 twelfths. So again, did I rename it as a larger fraction? Yes. So I'm going to make this a little bit neater. So watch, my, my problem is going to get pretty big here. So now I have 3 and 15 twelfths. And I'm going to subtract 1 and 4 twelfths. Now I have same denominator, and I have a numerator that I can subtract from. So 15 minus 4 is going to give me 11 twelfths. And I subtract my whole number, 3 minus 1, which gives me, whoops, gives me 2. So my final answer after all of those calculations and regrouping and all of that is 2 and 11 twelfths. Okay, so now let's take a look at our second example. We have 3 and 2 thirds minus 1 and 4 sixths. I know that kind of looks like 14, but that is 1 and 4 sixths. So I'm going to stack that just like we've been doing. And notice, once again, we do not have the same denominator, but I can do a quick common denominator because I know 6 is a multiple of 3. So we're going to turn that into 3 and 4 sixth, and then we're going to leave this 1 and 4 sixth. Well, looky there. I have 4 sixths minus 4 sixth. So technically that would be 0 sixth, and then we're going to do 3 minus 1, which would be 2. So we could write 2 and 0, 6, or we could just write the whole number 2. So we covered a lot in this lesson. Um, let's summarize a little bit here. So we can use trading and rewriting fractions with larger fractions to solve subtraction problems with fractions and mixed numbers. We can also do so-called, quote, regrouping, right? And that happens when subtracting fractions, just like whole number subtraction, similarly. But we must have the same denominators to subtract. So notice that I'm thinking, thinking, yes, I think I have it. But I think you might need to practice in class. So until next time, guys.